Hey guys, Athena here, and um, I am sitting here with Loretta Hidalgo Whitesaids and ha Hallie Lambert. So I'm really excited to talk to both of you guys. Uh, Loretta here is the co founder of, uh, co creator of Yuri's Night yeah. out here in LA. Um, and Hallie, you actually write for The Expanse. So this is going to be a really fun conversation. <laughs> um, so I just kind of want to jump right into Yuri's Night. I want to jump into that, um, why you even started um, the party out here. I know it's a worldwide party, but talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, we started Yuri's Night back in 2001, and the original idea well, it was just to make space cool again, because back in those days, you guys may not be old enough to remember, but um, we'd done a really good job of making space boring. Mm. Um, it, it felt like, like the adults were trying to make it as boring as possible, and I was like, this is not cool. And so we started this party and we were, uh, we wanted to make space cool. We wanted to bring together artists and musicians with scientists and engineers. And we wanted to give people who didn't have access to the space industry, like access, because they love space too. And, and they want to be a part of it. So it was a, a great um, opportunity to, to, you know, bridge those worlds and, and build community and let people come together, show the power of space to bring the world together. Yeah, that, that's incredible, and I feel like um, every single year it's just constantly growing too, and you're really trying to expand more. Um, how did you end up choosing the California Science Center as the place to really have uh, the party out here in LA? Well, when we started, uh, we did it in um, what the uh, nightclub that's now called the Avalon at Hollywood and Vine. Oh, yeah. Um, but when the shuttles retired and Los Angeles got one, it was a no-brainer that we had to move there. So um, we called them up and we're like, hey, can we rent out your um, pavilion for a party? And, uh, and, we, and we made it happen. It was really cool. And we've been there under the shuttle partying now for five years. We've had Buzz Aldrin there. Um, it's been yeah. an epic ride. Yeah, it's, it's been so incredible. And um, I feel like it's what's great about it is that because you tie in the art, and so that kind of leveraged me into, I want to talk about science, science fiction a little bit, um, with uh, writing for The Expanse. Like, how did you really start to first go about um, like writing for it? Like, I, I always want to know where the inspiration comes from. It probably comes from, obviously, a lot of science. But um, how did you first... Well, the show is based on a series of novels by James S. A. Corey, and it's actually a two people, um, Ty Frank and Daniel Abraham, and it actually started out as a role-playing game, online role-playing game by Ty Frank. Long, many, many years ago, he developed this whole world, had like a thick binder full of this world, like this world that he created, The Expanse, and. Daniel Abraham, who had already been writing um, science fiction under another pen name, started playing the game and then was like, we should make this into a book. And <laughs> yes. so I think they are scheduled to do nine books. I think there's seven out now. And um, so that's where the idea for the, the Expanse, we're adapting the books. And they're actually in the writer's room with us and have been amazing, uh, like helping us adapt as, as best we can without changing too much, keeping the tone and the feel for the story there, while also changing enough of the format because books and TV are very, very different. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah, it definitely is like a lot different. So yeah. um, overall, how do you feel like science fiction is really impacting like the community? Obviously people are into science, are going to like love science fiction anyway, but do you think it's really making a big impact? I know we were talking backstage earlier um, about some yeah. previous work you've done. How do you think that's really gonna impact our, our future in science? Uh, well, I hope it will inspire young kids or teenage anyone to start learning about the real side of science, to watch, you know, the space shuttle launches, then um, maybe see that they can create. There's so much more to do. There's so much to create, and it can be fun, and it can be exciting. Um, for example, when I was on CSI, that's where I started a writer's assistant a long time ago, and it just blew up worldwide. Uh, the show and as a result they had a massive increase of people studying forensic science or going into the forensic science side of things um, and developing new technology that way that are inspired by the show so yeah hopefully you know it has the same sort of impact on science and space and um, we'll see but so yeah so it's incredible <laughs> and I feel like that that ties a lot also in with Yuri's Night uh, yeah. where I, I, like you know, the overall goal with this is to really try and get 
more of the community to take part in space exploration and, and the future of it, correct? I mean, uh, yeah. how do you feel like um, this is going to affect non-science, uh, like, I guess, students, younger kids, like people that were never really um, in the science world growing up? Um, what is, how do, how do you think this is like, going to end up affecting them? Yeah, I think that would be awesome. We created nec the next generation of space explorers out of all of this. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have, you're in LA, we have Yuri's Night Kids as well during the afternoon where they can go and launch rockets. <gasps> And, That's so exciting. Yeah, and talk to people who work in the industry and I'm learn about that. it. Yeah, <laughs> you can. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Wait, what do they want? Like, launch is it like the, the soda bottle? Estes. Or, uh, yeah. Like, like actual fire. Yeah. This is amazing. Fire. What? Yeah, so it was one of the cool places, this Columbia, because they have the permits to actually launch, you know, Estes rockets like in LA County. So it's, if you want to make fire, this is, it's a good way to do it. Wow, that's amazing. And this is uh, the same day as Yuri's night? Yeah, it's in the afternoon. It's from 10 to 4 at the in Downey at the Columbia Memorial Space Center. Okay. Um, it's for kids, but, you know, you guys can come. If I you mean, want. I would totally do that. So is that what, so Yuri's night is going to be April 7th yes. this year, right? Correct? Okay, yeah. So it's going to be Saturday. Um, so you're going to be doing Yuri's night first in Downey uh, for children yep. during the day. And then you're going out to the California Science Center, which... It's gonna be like the big party. That's yeah. like really, really exciting. Um, okay, cool. So, who, who are you most excited about like this year? Um, I guess that, that you're bringing on board um, that you're gonna have at the California Science Center. Yeah, we have some. Well, both of you are, are ambassadors at the event yes. this year. So, if you want to come <laughs> hang out with all three of us, we'll be there. Um, so that's fun. And we have a, we have a cool slate of ambassadors this year. We, well, we, our keynote is um, astronaut Nicole Stodd. Yes. She did a long duration mission on International Space Station. Um, she flew on the space shuttle as well, um, and she's now retired. And she, she, she's a, a the artistic astronaut. She's a, she paints as well. She's a she's a chemical engineer, I think, by training, and yeah. she's um, just really awesome powerhouse um, astronaut. So we're really excited to have Nicole out. She's doing great stuff with humanitarian work and what Yuri's Night's all about is like how do we use space to help Earth and make a difference for our our people. Um, and so she's going to talk about a little bit about her work that she does in that as well. So we have Nicole coming. We have uh, Bill Nye is going to join <gasps> joining us this Exciting. year. So the, you know we can all come. Yes. We can all save the world together. It's going to be yes. grid. Um, yeah. And we have some other fun people like um, Dylan Taylor is coming. Mm -hmm. He started Space for Humanity, which is a nonprofit that's looking to. Um, you know, you can submit your video to apply to um, get a space flight. For people who can't afford to buy their own suborbital space flight, Space for Humanity is going to be giving away space flights to people who they think can use that experience for good to make a difference. So, Speaking of the suborbital flights. Guy you want to meet. I, yeah, <laughs> definitely. So with the suborbital orbital flights, let's talk a little bit, I guess, about Virgin Galactic. <laughs> I really, really want to get into this. Um, when do you think the, the, the first, like, I guess com commercial suborbital flights are going to be. Yeah, well, happening. I'm hoping. Well, I have one of the tickets, so I'm really. I've been waiting yes, for a long I was time. Ask I'm really you when excited you're going. and hopeful. <laughs> um, I would love to fly next year. That sounds great to me. Um, we're really excited. We're so close to getting um, back into powered test flights, and yes. so you know the mood in Mojave is really. You know, there's all this excitement brewing because they're like we're so close, and we're just like. Uh, you know, to get to see Spaceship Two with the rocket motor on again, it'll be um, it's going to be a really great day for us. And then you know, getting through a couple more power test flights, getting Richard Branson into space, yes. um, and then starting to fly our customers is going to be uh, down in New Mexico is going to be really exciting. Oh man, that's going to be so cool! And and just to, like clarify, I guess for everyone, in case people don't know what the suborbital orbital flights are going to be doing, it's just going to be going where exactly? <laughs> yeah, so we'll take <laughs> off like an airplane. You go up to about fifty thousand feet. Um, drop the rock, the spaceship. We light our rocket motor, go for about a minute, um, and then that's enough to get you out of the atmosphere. You break the speed of sound. You're going like Mach three, so three times the speed of sound. Yes. Um, and then so they cool. kick the motor off, and you get about three to four minutes of weightlessness. So you'll be just like this. That's so cool. <laughs> you'll be able to float. So I, I have, uh, you know, like eighty. I've done like about eighty flights as a um, staff on zero, the zero G plane. Right. So you were gotten, training. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, when I worked there, I, would, you know, we get to float for like tw on an airplane. You can float for about twenty seconds at a time. So the idea, you can hold your breath for twenty seconds. You know. Yeah. The idea of getting to, you know, have like three or four minutes. I can't hold my breath for three or four minutes. Oh yeah. It's I a can't long. It's that. actually a long time if you have to sit there, like when you're sitting in the microwave waiting for it. Anyway. Oh my gosh. Um, so yeah. You get to <laughs> Microwave. Like four minutes. Yeah, it'll go like that. It'll go a lot faster than waiting <laughs> yeah. for the microwave. Um, but yeah, so getting to see the curvature of the Earth and the blackness of space and look down on our home planet and float around is going to be really 
you know, sublime. Oh, that's gonna be so cool. Now, is this outfit gonna be one of the? I do, yeah, this is, <laughs> you have a great idea. I hadn't thought about that. I should definitely wear this on my flight. I think we might have, a, you know, assigned spacesuits. But yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be really cool. Um, what is, uh, I guess, like the number one inspiration for you when you're writing um, some of the script for, or some of the, I guess, some of the stories for the Expanse and um, a lot of, uh, a lot of everything that you do. Where, where does one of your big inspirations come from? Hmm. Oh, for 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 writing the specific show, personal inspirations or like show ins for sci-fi sci for sci-fi sci yeah I I guess just all well there's Carl Sagan's one I love reading just his he was such a prolific writer as well as a scientist so that reading his words inspire me but then just Star Trek and historic 2000 Space Odyssey 2001 um, those kind of movies and just Remembering back to when I was a little girl, I lived out, grew up on the country, and I would go outside even in the winter time when the sky was really clear, and you could just see so many more stars because you're not in the city. And I would stare up at the sky and just try and contemplate how far it went out and how far eternity, like how, like what the universe, the and and. My little brain could not handle, I mean, I don't think my adult brain could still even handle it, but like, I would just start crying, just trying to imagine and figure it out. And I think, I mean, ever since I was little, I've just have been fascinated by space, but I'm a creative, I'm a writer, I'm not a scientist. Those are, you know, you go with where your strengths are. But this show has opened so many doors to be able to meet real scientists and astronauts and kind of become an astronaut groupie in a way. <laughs> so many since I've been on the show. I love that. And, yeah. um, so just that continual inspiration of now having a door into the um, the Cassini uh, finale I was at JPL for and met amazing people there. And so it's opened doors to rekindle and continue on the, the uh, inspiration. Yeah, and the, and the journey, and I yeah. think that that's one thing that's so incredible about this, because you're tying those two parts of the brain together, um, both like the creativity and then also obviously the logic, the science, but that's one thing about space and space exploration and astrophysics, physics, it's, it's actually tying those two worlds together. It's not just like, it's a lot of creativity. Um, so before we wrap up, I do want to ask about the space swag that you have <laughs> that you brought here. So um, what is this? Is this the t-shirt? The yeah, so I brought the t-shirt. Yes. Guys. Got the sticker. The sticker looks Here's great on the that. laptop. Yo, I'll just um, add that on and, somewhere. And the patch. <laughs> so yeah, if you if you want to, so cool. uh, you know, we if you want to find out about more about Yuri's Night, you can go to yurisnight.net. Uh, go to the store to get some swag. You can go to you know la.yurisnight or spacecoast.yurisnight to check out our. We have two. So that was the other thing we added this year. So um, we've all we've done the LA party under the shuttle last five years, but this year for the first time we're doing the. Uh, Florida event, spacecoast.yourisnight.net, under the Atlantis. So oh. we, we're shuttle to shuttle. We're doing the, you know, all, you know. Oh, man. We're going for all three next year. No, I'm teasing. We, we are, <laughs> we're, uh, yeah, so we have, we have two shuttle parties that uh, we're doing this year. So no matter, you know, which coast you're on, we got a party, yeah. party for you. And is, is it going to be the same night on No, well, Saturday? that's what's cool. So I get to go to both. <laughs> so oh, yes. Ours is going to be Saturday. Here in L.A., it'll be Saturday, uh, April 7th. And in Florida, it'll be Friday, April 13th. So. Oh. Okay. Uh, that. And then there's one in D.C. on the 7th as well, and there's one in Seattle on the 14th. So, um, Is there not one in New York also yet? Or? Um, not know. that I've heard of yet. Okay, well, it's, 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 it's Yeah. At the Enterprise or something. <laughs> we're, we're, we're working on Enterprise. Yeah. We've got some, but it, you know, it, it's growing. It grows, exactly. And then on the 12th, which is like the actual day that Yuri Gagarin went to space, that's when it's like the whole world, just like look on social media and stuff, like everyone's gonna be having their own separate parties. So um, so I'm really excited for this, but awesome. Well, thank you two so much for coming and, and talking a little bit about science fiction, Yuri's Night and space exploration. So thank you guys so much. And don't forget to like and subscribe and tune in next week for our next show. Thanks. Thank you.